My name is uh, Sergei Markochev. Um, uh, I studied uh, applied mathematics and physics at uh, uh, Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology in Moscow. Uh, after that, I spent five years uh, doing my PhD degree in uh, nuclear physics. So I studied rare nuclear transformations. Uh, but uh, 11 years ago, I moved to the UK, and since then, I was working as a data scientist in different companies and different industries here in London, where I'm currently living. Uh, among the industries which I worked with, uh, there were uh, green energy, media investment, consulting, and currently I'm working as a lead data scientist in uh, Faden International. So this is the global recruitment agency. So one of the biggest in the world. Uh, as a lead data scientist at Faden, uh, what I'm working uh, on, uh, how to implement AI in the recruitment agency. Uh, so AI world is quite general, right? So by AI, I would mean machine learning and the latest uh, achievements and AI, I mean large language models. I would say that uh, recruitment agency is quite conservative and uh, if they're talking about small agencies, they usually do not implement the AI, so there are still plenty of manual work. Um, at Freedom, uh, yeah, because this is a, a great, uh, big consultancy, uh, they can allow themselves to have a, well, not big, but a small data team and data science teams. Um, we are trying to solve mostly business problems, uh, which I would say is uh, predictive analytics. Mm -hmm. uh, so our goal is to uh, support business with analytics of what's going on currently with the business, uh, also implementing uh, the uh, business intelligence technologies of developing dashboards and so on. Uh, but also our goal is to forecast what will happen with the business, for example, mm -hmm. in the next month's time, because, uh, you know, the recruitment process takes uh, usually a few months. So uh, if you start today, you will place a candidate in a couple of months time. So you would like to know what will happen in a few months. And uh, the final piece, I would say, uh, we're currently working also on uh, how we can improve the performance of individual recruitment consultants. Uh, which part of the recruitment process is mostly uh, affected by AI. <clears throat> uh, from my understanding, uh, most of the time, recruitment agency, uh, recruitment agents uh, spending on the candidate screening, you know, candidate contacting, uh, and uh, well, assessing where whether they would be a good fit for the vacancy. So that's why this is uh, this is where AI uh, can affect and uh, actually is implemented in the recruitment process. Uh, for example, uh, Faden is using algorithms uh, to match, uh, I would say, the candidates, well, candidates' CV to job description. Uh, but you need to think that uh, the algorithm just proposes a list of candidates, right? So the final decision is made by a recruitment consultant based on their own experience. And uh, of course, the part which is related to the candidate screening is not automated. Uh, recruitment consultants still uh, make uh, a phone call or a video call, for example, to assess the skills of the candidate. Um, and after CV has been sent, there is no much work on the candidate, so that's why this part is not automated. You know, so it's just uh, communication with the candidate and uh, with the company. How relevant today are the traditional tools like CV, interview process, and so on, and uh, how heavy the current recruitment process rely on AI tools? Uh, I would say it depends, of course, in the industry. Uh, because Faden is working mostly with the um, uh, technology sectors, I would say, right? Say uh, banking, utility, pharmacy sectors, and so on. Uh, Faden still uh, relies a lot on the traditional uh, process like CV, interviews, and so on. Uh, I know some business cases when, for example, uh, recruitment agencies are focused on the low qualified jobs. You know, in, in this case, I think it would be possible to uh, get rid of CV and prepare maybe just a list of questions if 
uh, a candidate uh, pass this test, you know, uh, they will be considered. But uh, for most uh, high qualified jobs, uh, CVs and uh, interviews are still very relevant because you can imagine uh, if a candidate applies for a job with a uh, six figures salary, you know, uh, it would be surprising if uh, he or she cannot provide a good CV. Yeah, so what realistically AI can assess today regarding the soft skills of the candidate? <clears throat> uh, well, to be honest, I don't know the answer to that question <laughs> because, as I mentioned, uh, Faden is mostly focused on the technology sector, so that's why soft skills, uh, they are mm, like not, uh, you know, the, not the main skills which are assessed usually. Um, so uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that it is possible to maybe develop such a model which would assess soft skills. My main question would be uh, how this model uh, will be used, so what is the business case, why companies would prefer to use uh, this tool rather than to talk personally, uh, you know, with the candidate. Uh, because uh, when we're talking about recruitment process, um, it is still very personal. Uh, well, you know that um, each company has its own, I would say, character. It means that some companies are uh, working more formally, some more informally. Uh, you may have that some companies have great culture, some may not. So when um, a company interviews a person, they're not just assessing their hard skills, right? But they're trying to understand whether this particular person would fit into their culture. Uh, this means that if uh, a candidate was rejected, for example, uh, by a company, it does not mean that they rejected fully on the technical skills. Maybe they were rejected because uh, not great fit to the culture. Uh, and uh, it's quite difficult, I think, to assess uh, whether a particular candidate would fit to a particular company, but this is just my opinion. What are the main challenges for the companies to implement AI processes? Uh, when they don't have large development teams for that, right? Um, I would say today uh, there is no need to have large teams to develop AI solutions uh, because there are lots of variants. Uh, if the company is not a software company, they should not develop software by themselves, first of all. Usually the companies rely on existing solutions um, and uh, lots of companies uh, propose AI solutions, you know, for any companies, big and small. If uh, existing solutions does not match or the solution needs to be fit uh, to the company uh, business, um, in this case, there are consultancies which could help the company to fit an existing solution, right? And the last case scenario is um, when company can hire a few developers, for example, to develop something unique uh, for a specific company, uh, and there are low code platforms for that, right? So even though their functionality is limited, but uh, candidates can develop something quick uh, and the solution will be well maintained, right? So you can see there are lots of variants. Uh, regarding the main challenges, I would say the data quality is the main challenge, not <laughs> just for Faden, but for any company. Even though you have AI solutions in place, you need to make sure that data quality is good enough. This is especially useful for the recruitment process because data usually generated by people and people make mistakes. Uh, you can think about it, it as um, uh, a consultant record the progress with the backends, right? And uh, well, he or she can make mistakes about the dates. Uh, I have, well, I saw a lot of situations when, for example, interview scheduled uh, before CV was submitted, right? <laughs> you can think about this uh, mm -hmm. from the analytical point of view, right? Uh, also, there are lots of steps missing sometimes, like uh, CV submitted and record says that the candidate uh, was uh, finally placed without any interview, right? So <laughs> this, this is not the case, of course, uh, this is just a data quality issue. And any predictive analytics which you develop should be robust enough to uh, cope with these uh, situations. 
so how AI platform can understand uh, the learner, right, and uh, learner's pace uh, according on uh, his behavior. Uh, yeah, for, from uh, my understanding as a well, professional data scientist, of course, uh, I can think about the learning platform as uh, a place where you can measure a person behavior, right? Uh, learner behavior. How he or she will answer particular questions, uh, how he or she will click on some buttons, uh, how regular he or she will visit the website and so on. All these actions may give you information about the learner. And uh, well, I would say that this is the pure data science task, you know, to segment, uh, segment the learners. And uh, based on the segment, uh, you can predict uh, maybe the output or next actions and so on. So this is a really data science uh, job, you know, to segment customers based on behavior. In order to get this information, of course, you would need uh, some sort of questionnaires and uh, tracking uh, session. So uh, how learners interact with the platform. Uh, regarding the pace, learning pace, I would think, well, this, this is just my personal uh, opinion, but uh, I think this is the question mostly uh, to the psychology. Uh, yeah, so to the, the psychologists, because, uh, you know, some people need um, that uh, pace adjusted accordingly to the learner. Maybe uh, some would prefer that the learning platform would force them to meet some deadlines and so on. Uh, I don't know exactly uh, which one is better for a particular learner. Maybe this could be some of the questions on the website. Do I believe that AI will soon uh, generate personalized tests in real time? Uh, Actually, they are already able to generate right personalized tests. If you ask ChatGPT, uh, yeah, it will come up uh, to lots of questions depending on the prompt which uh, you provide to them. Uh, my main question would be about how this test will be used, because even the, in the in the recruitment process, when you have one vacancy and multiple candidates, uh, you would like to uh, assess different candidates on the same same set of questions, because if the questions are different, uh, it would be quite difficult, you know, to compare the candidates. And I'm pretty sure that the same stuff uh, relates to the skills. Say, if we are trying to assess knowledge of mathematics, for example, uh, of candidates, right? Uh, I would prefer to have the same set uh, of questions, or at least similar questions, you know, with some variations. Uh, to make sure, just to make sure that uh, uh, you have answers of the candidates to the same question, so you measure apples to apples, not apples to oranges, right? But again, in terms of generating tests, uh, this is already implemented. Yeah, so generating the AI works pretty well here. So, what is the role of um, educational platforms, right? Uh, to uh, provide well, to learn uh, companies and their employees to the latest AI uh, tools and so on. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, we, are, we are living in the, in the time when AI, well, <laughs> revolutionize, right, uh, our life. Uh, it means that uh, employees can improve their productivity using AI tools. But, uh, well, at the same time, well, uh, you need to so you need to make sure that you're using AI properly, right? So AI cannot uh, completely replace people. AI can just uh, uh, automate some routine stuff, and this is where AI uh, works pretty well. Um, in terms of uh, educational platforms, yes, of course, uh, it is really good to have uh, some, uh, you know, uh, resource some websites on hand if you need to improve knowledge in some particular topics. From my understanding, uh, of course, for example, well, for the developers, it's good to know uh, if there are new uh, technologies, for example, how to fine tune models, you know, how to uh, maybe uh, even how to write uh, good emails using AI would be really important uh, to improve the productivity. 
But another topic which I would like to share is uh, I think uh, cyber security issues also become very important because uh, when people can, um, you know, looks like uh, something which they are not actually are, right? They generating emails from Microsoft, <laughs> uh, even though they are not from Microsoft, you know, and generating some documents which are looks very, very looks very identical, you know, very close to the original, but they are not originals and so on. So you can see there are lots of aspects in cybersecurity and uh, I think this course is also uh, should be very relevant to the companies. Uh, at Faden, I just would like to say that we have regular training, especially in cybersecurity, because we are working with personal data. So what would be my advice to the companies and educational institutions? Uh, about how they can use educational platforms to upskill their employees. Um, uh, yeah, of course, uh, um, easy availability of learning materials at educational platforms uh, could improve um, uh, well productivity of employees, right? And this is where it is very important uh, to be um, on base with the recent technologies. Mm. Uh, yeah, from, from my understanding, uh, yeah, it is very important. And in my jobs, well, I have been working in London for 11 years and uh, all companies usually provide access to educational platforms. Uh, I think it uh, depends on the company culture, how mm, it is, uh, you know, how much time is dedicated to the learning. Because usually, of course, companies are focused on the performance, KPI metrics, but uh, learning, uh, and uh, ups improve their skills in the recent technologies is also very important, not just for the developers, but for people who, while writing emails, you know, making communications and so on. So this is also very important. Uh, yeah, I, I personally think that, of course, uh, companies need to invest more time and do this regularly. So I, I would say maybe schedule a couple of hours in the week uh, in order to dedicate this time to use the educational platforms.